Hello. Hi, Allison. How are you? I'm doing well with yourself. I'm perfect. Thanks for asking. Thanks for asking. All right. Did you have any questions before we had gotten started? No, I'm actually, um, I'm totally looking forward to this podcast. I love what you've done so far, and I thank you for having me on as a guest. Oh, thank you so much. And you know what? I just want to ensure that um, I pronounce your name correctly. Can you mm -hmm. pronounce your last name for me? So my last name is Scrutchins. Scrutchins. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Absolutely. All right. And Allison is correct, right? Uh-huh. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is give a very brief bio about you, and I will ask you to fill in the gaps and share with our audience what you desire them to know about you and your company. Awesome. Okay. So, and then if you can just um, kind of eliminate any background noise, any kind of typing or anything to try to get a real clean copy of the audio. That would be good. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you for joining us for Black Entrepreneur Experience. This is where we shine the light on the most successful Black entrepreneurs in the world. I'm your host, Dr. Frances Richards. And today, I am so honored to have with us Allison Scrutchins. She's an author, executive producer, and owner of Forward Planning Incorporation. Welcome, Allison. How are you? Hi, I am doing great. It is a pleasure to be here with you today, and I definitely am looking forward to sharing great knowledge, wisdom, and information with you. You know what? I have given our audience such a brief bio about you, and I am so tempted to jump right in on this How to Be an Entrepreneur 101, but I'm going <laughs> to hold that because I, you are going to drop some value bombs to our audience, but I'm going to let you fill in the gap, and why don't you share with our audience what you'd like them to know about yourself and your company? Well, basically, I am an entrepreneur going on four years. Um, it's always been in my blood. It's always something that I've wanted to do. But my business, my baby for planning was first, incorpor first incorporated in 2014. And it is a consulting and management company where we work with small businesses, nonprofits, fellow entrepreneurs in the areas of event planning branding, marketing, client management holistically. And that was in 2014. And since then, I have now become an author of my book, How to Be an Entrepreneur One-on-One, -on -one. Imagination and Discipline is What It Takes. And the book is so amazing because it's not only an empowerment guide, which is the first half, but the back half is an actual workbook where I put you to work and I challenge you because everybody says they want to be an entrepreneur nowadays, but nobody's ready to put the work in. So the workbook actually goes into what's the mission, the vision, what's your target population, you know, what's your startup budget look like and things of that nature. And it's all under the everyday entrepreneur brand. So, oh, go ahead. No, no, no. You go on. <laughs> Continue. Um, the Everyday Entrepreneur brand was birthed a year after Ford Planning was incorporated. I basically had been working for the past 365 days, 24 hours, and I felt like nobody truly understand, understood the work that went into being an entrepreneur. So I created Everyday Entrepreneur because every single day as entrepreneurs, we are grinding and striving towards our business goals. And um, that's where I created the curriculum. And now the book has been released. And as of last year, um, I got into something that I've always wanted to do, which is filmmaking. And I became an executive producer of my first short film called Hashtag Where is Beauty? Um, and everything has just been great since I first took that step and leap of faith to become the entrepreneur that I said I wanted to be. Allison, tell us where can um, individuals find your book and your movie and tell us about how you started um, Forward Planning. So basically, um, the book can be found on my website. The website is howtobe101.com, how to be an entrepreneur. 
www.thebookshop101.com is the website and you can get the books, you can get some t-shirts, you can get some other apparel that you may like that support that supports entrepreneurs. And then the movie right now is still in the film festival circuit. So um, all filmmakers know that we can't really show our movie to the public after we're done with the film festivals because, you know, they have a clause that it can't be shown anywhere else and it can only be private screenings and things of that nature. So it's still going through that circuit and we're looking to release it on a platform early next year, 2018. Allison, you said to us that entrepreneurship was in your blood. Tell us about that aha moment that you knew that the business that you started was the right business for you and it was going to be profitable. What was that? Mm, my aha moment, I would have to say my aha moment was when I quit my job. My aha moment occurred because I was unhappy in my job. I had an amazing position. I was very young, great job, um, about 70000 in salary. And I was literally unhappy in my position. Um, it brought my spirit down to go into work. And I just did not like the work that I was doing anymore. And so I prayed about it and I looked for guidance. And two weeks later, I put in my two weeks notice. <laughs> and so... The moment I put in my two weeks notice, all I had was money in my savings. It was Thanksgiving break. Actually, this is the the anniversary of it. Um, it was around this time for no five years ago. It was around this time. And um, my aha moment came when I quit my job and then I was offered a contract to work with a nonprofit organization that needed my assistance as far as creating the mission, the vision, the bylaws and things of that nature. And um I didn't even have a business yet. And I honestly quit my job with intentions of getting another job. And it was never intentions of starting my business. I didn't think I was ready to start a business just yet. Um, but little lo and behold, the business was birthed out of me quitting my job. So I got that first contract. Um, I signed that contract exactly one week after I quit my position. And um, more contracts came later. It wasn't a monthly retainer contract. It was a one-off contract for some services at that moment. Um, and, you know, four or five months later, I incorporated forward planning and the rest has been history. Allison, would you recommend someone take your same journey or would you have them do something different? Well, the fact of the matter is that Everybody's entrepreneurship journey is different and we need to stop comparing ourselves to other entrepreneurs and focus on what actually our journey is requiring of us. So, no, I wouldn't recommend anybody go the same route that I'm that I went. I would recommend them go the route that they're supposed to go. And the only way that they will know that is, you know, with purpose and understanding, you know, what is their calling and what it is that they're meant to do in this life and how they're meant to change other people's lives. And so I think that every single entrepreneur journey is different and we just have to figure out what is our individual journey. So for anybody who's interested in entrepreneurship, I would just say, you know, figure out what is your niche? What is it that you can bring to the table that nobody else can take away from you? And then focus on perfecting that and making multiple streams of income with that. Allison, how do you define success? Ooh, that's a good one. I think success is divine, is, def is defined, I'm sorry. I think that set success is defined internally. So for me, success is not about having a lot of money, um, even though millionaire status is something that I will accomplish one day. I still don't think that that will make me successful. I think that being successful means that you wake up every day happy in what you're doing. It's just like, you know, when I was talking about my job that I left, like I would literally come into work and it would bring my spirit down to come into work. And now I wake up every day happy at the journey that I chose. And, you know, although I am the one determining factor as to how my bills will get paid or to how I'm going to be able to take care of myself because I'm the only person that, you know, defines whether or not we get a new contract, whether or not the paycheck is coming on time, you know, things of that nature. 
I still am 100% happy waking up knowing that I'm doing what I'm doing in for planning and everyday entrepreneur and, you know, just transforming other women who are entrepreneurs and helping them get closer to their dreams. My success is because I wake up doing exactly what I love. And I think that that's what success is about. It's not about the money. It's not about the materialistic things. It's about being happy and what you're doing in life. So how do you keep your happiness throughout this entrepreneurial journey? The the trick to keeping your happiness throughout the entrepreneurial journey is to not allow everything that's going to come your way to keep you down. Because at the end of the day, it's not peaches and cream. It's, it's highs, it's lows, it's sad moments, it's happy moments. And there are honestly more sad moments than there are happy moments. And, you know, you just have to keep pushing forward. Um, one of my favorite things is that forward is the only way to go. Moving backwards is never an option. So we have to continue to press, push forward in these entrepreneurial goals and just stay focused on what it is we're trying to accomplish and the people that need us to succeed. Because I think that people often forget that your business is not about you. It's about the population that you're serving. It's about who needs your business to succeed. Who needs this product that you're offering? Who needs this service that you're offering? Those are the people that you have to think about. Allison, what is one daily or weekly habit that you do consistently that has given you the greatest success? Hmm. Let me think. I am a big to-do list person. Um, so as many apps and reminders and calendars and things of that nature that I could maintain, I am an old fashioned, write it in my planner. These are the things that I need to get done this week. And the reason I believe I'm that way is because I like to see the checks next to those items because it makes me feel a little bit more accomplished. So something that I do on a weekly basis is I create a to-do list of the business things that I need to get accomplished, whether it's for my clients, whether it's for the business, whether it's for me personally and my brand. And then at the end of the week, I make sure I check those things off. And whatever did not get checked off, I make sure I add it to the following week. So therefore, I'm feeling like I'm keeping myself on task. And I think that it's a good um a good weekly habit that I have that allows me to not drop the ball. So when I hear you talk about Allison, a planner, and I know that there is a lot of them out there, a lot of lifestyle entrepreneurs, they've jumped into the journal, the planning business. Is there a specific planner that you would recommend that is your go-to planner that has helped you? So funny you should ask that. Um, I am actually working on a planner. <laughs> so it's going to be called the Everyday Entrepreneur Planner. And it will talk about, you know, how to get things off your to-do list, parking lot items that you want to accomplish, just staying on task with your day-to-day -day activities. And I'm releasing it early 2018. So I don't have one that I suggest right now. Um, of course, I'm going to suggest mine. And the reason I created mine is because I basically don't use the planners that I buy the way that I should. I use them the way that I feel as though an entrepreneur should. So I'm not writing things by day by day. I'm literally creating these to-do lists, creating these timelines, and focusing on things that me as an entrepreneur, I need to accomplish. And that's why I decided to create my own planner. But at the moment, it's not one that I, I really have to suggest. Allison, what is one valuable lesson you wish you knew before starting your own business? Ooh, that's, that's a great question. A valuable lesson that I wish I knew before starting my business was that, was that everybody who begins with you will not finish with you. And I say that because there are so many people who I remember being at my side at the beginning of my entrepreneurship journey who are not here with me now. And even looking at it from a different perspective, there are so many people who I remember not believing in me 
at the beginning of my entrepreneurship journey who now will say, I always knew you were going to make it. I always knew your business was going to be successful. And these are the people that will swear up and down that they were with you in the trenches when you were grinding, when you were depressed, when you were sad. And now they're basically on a bandwagon. So something that I wish I knew was the amount of people that would shift, change, and just get a better understanding on what it means to have people in your life seasonally as opposed to having people in your life for a long term. Right. And that's one of the things that I like to say that, you know, there are some people that come for a season. There are some that comes for a reason. And there are some that comes for a lifetime. And so we have to distinguish what their relationship is and not muddy the water in reference to that. Um, Because sometimes we can, speaking about myself, we can get a little bit emotional behind those seasonal people leaving our lives and, you know, embracing that it was just a season. So Mm -hmm. absolutely. Exactly. Crystal, you talked to us at the beginning of the podcast. You made it sound so easy that you had this amazing job making 70000 a year. You were unhappy in the position. You quit the job and landed your first contract. Your intentions were not to start a business. So I want us to take us back to that moment. The job that you had, did you go to school for that? And tell us about if yes, in terms of college, and if yes, tell us about if your company now is directly or indirectly related to that at all, or if they are polar opposites. So yes and no, I went to school for it. Um, My undergraduate degree is in social work, and then my master's degree is in public administration, basically meaning that I'm able to manage anything publicly or in the nonprofit sector. And um, at the time, I was working for a chamber of commerce, managing a city pro- two city programs. And um, I basically saw the lack of resources and educational opportunities that were available to small businesses. And that is why Forward Planning was created, because I wanted to be their one-stop shop for all of their planning needs. I wanted to be able to allow them to become sustainable small businesses and nonprofit organizations that were not dependent upon the government for anything that they may need. So every single client that I take on and have taken on in some way, shape or form is creating economic development, whether it's with the population they serve, the community they work in or the services that they provide. I am being a conduit for economic development through my business. So it is related to what I did before I quit my job, but I'm taking it to another level so that I can teach these business owners and these nonprofit founders and these fellow entrepreneurs the education that they need so that they can be sustainable on them on their own. And then if they choose to move forward with me as a monthly retainer, then they have that option as well. So, Allison, what's working well for you right now in your business? Um, what's working well for me in my business is what's working well for me in my business. I believe what's working well for me in my business is the team that I'm building. Um, it's one thing to be alone and become an entrepreneur and to, to, you know, be the main CEO, president, founder, and all of those awesome titles. But then it's another to build a team that's actually working towards the same goals that you're working towards in your business. So I believe that what's working well for me is that I am, I have been placed around such amazing individuals that believe in me, believe in my business and believe in my mission. And those people are helping me to continue to grow forward planning, to continue to create new clients, um, to create new contracts, get new clients, and just to be able to move forward in a very productive manner. 
how long did it take you, Allison, to build that team? So you had mentioned you'd been in business for five years. Did you start out with the team or were you solo? Take us on that journey. Yeah, so um, I quit my job about five years ago. The business is going on four years old. Um, and the team came. Uh, now, it hasn't been a breezy journey with finding the team. Um, I started off building my team about two years ago um, with just one project manager. Um, and, you know, trial and error, you have to figure out what works for you, what works for other people. And so I'm still currently building my team, but I do have a great current project manager, a great assistant and a great publicist. And um, as the team continues to build, you know, you have to understand that all personalities won't mesh well. And so I felt as though I failed the first round when my first project manager didn't work out. And then I realized that it wasn't meant to, it wasn't meant to happen. And that type of person wasn't best for the company at the time. So then I just had to, you know, strap up my boots and go find another one. And um, I think that we often get so afraid of failure. That's what st slows us down and keeps us stagnant. I did feel like I failed in the beginning with trying to create a team. But as I kept moving forward and continued to work toward having a better team, everything just started to fall into place. So you talk about failure, which is part of taking a risk. Tell us about that worst moment in business. What was that for you, Allison? And what was the takeaway? Mm, my worst moment in business. Um, I would have to say I was trying to expand my brand and, um, I was pitching to a, a very well-known magazine. I won't say their name, um, but I was pitching to a very well-known magazine and I, I had this big pitch about featuring entrepreneurs in the magazine and highlighting the work that they're doing in the communities and things of that nature. And um, I submitted five different articles for review and we were in conversations and we, you know, we went back and forth via email and we had um, all of these discussions about moving forward to which then something stopped and halted those conversations. And I didn't hear back from that editor anymore. Um, and I believe it was the next month or two months later, I saw... Um, a similar pitch being featured in their magazine by a different person, a different woman. Um, and I felt as though I failed in that moment because I gave so much of myself away for my ideas just to be taken and given to someone else. And that moment of failure was very hard for me. Um, and it made me very sad and it just, it, it, it discouraged me from, you know, wanting to work with another magazine or reaching out to anybody else with my ideas and just uh, finding a way to, you know, get the word out there myself. And it's OK, because that moment of failure led me to create my vlog. And on my vlog is where I feature entrepreneurs and I have opportunities to do videos with them and talk about how we can support them and get the word out there um, to other people to support them. And it it's a learning lesson, you know, failures are nothing but moments of le of lessons to learn. And, you know, we are going to keep failing if we don't learn the lesson we're supposed to learn in that moment, or we can learn from our mistakes and use that as an opportunity to move forward. So Allison, talk to a younger you. What advice would you give to a younger Allison? <laughs> Um, the advice that I would give to a younger Allison is not to worry about what other people have to say. If whatever your heart desires, do it. Um, I am often, I am a person who is willing to try something new, but in the midst of trying something new, I am worried about what the other people are going to think. And I had to tell myself, like, who who are they? Who are these people that you're referring to? What do you think that they're saying? Um, I had a great moment with um, 
a, a young lady I met at a retreat in Atlanta last weekend. And she, um, you know, I was telling her how I like to travel alone, but sometimes, you know, when I'm out eating alone and I'm in a whole nother state and I'm, you know, thinking about what the other people are thinking, they're like, why is she here alone? And she said to me, only person thinking that is you. <laughs> they can be, you know, thinking how pretty her hair is or, you know, you know, they could be worried, looking at, you know, wonder what kind of wine she's drinking. You know, they could be looking at anything but what you're worried about. And it was a great moment for me to say, you have to stop thinking about, stop being worried about what other people think. Do what your heart desires and let that be the end of the story. So, so that's what I would tell to my younger self. Allison, what keeps you going? Um, you know, friends, that's a great question um, because I will have a transparent moment of currently battling some depression and some anxiety that I'm going through. And um, the only thing that keeps me going is my faith. That's that's it. That's all. Trusting that it's all according to God's plan, what he wants and what he has next is on the way. And just being able to push through the moments of despair and the moments of sadness and to keep going because understanding that, you know, every time we're down and out, that's just because something big is on the way and, and just being ready to prepare for it. So what keeps me going is, is my faith in God that, you know, the best is still yet to come. It's I, according to so many people I know, you know, I've accomplished so many things and I've done a lot of things. Um, and to them, you know, my cousin called me a superstar the other day and I was like, I'm very far from a superstar. But, you know, what keeps me going is the fact that what I've accomplished right now is minor compared to what I'm going to accomplish in the next 10 years, the next 20 years, the next 30 years. And just knowing that is what keeps me pushing me and moving me forward. Who are your top two influencers, Allison, and what lessons do they teach you? Top two influencers. Do these are these people in the public or are these people close? They're whomever you desire them to be. Um, that is a great question. So, my top two influencers, I would have to say, um, one is Robert Townsend. Um, I love Robert Townsend what he's done for the black community, what he's done in the film industry, what he's done in media, um, what he represents. He's, he's never lost himself. And, you know, in Hollywood, he's always been down to earth. He still teaches in LA and, you know, making sure that people have access to jobs and film. And so he is one of the people that is definitely on my list of somebody that influences me daily. Um, because I know what he did, you know, when he first started out, the TV show he created for us, the movies and, you know, so many great things that he did for African Americans. Um, Robert Townsend is definitely one of my top influencers. Um, my, one of my top two influencers. And then, um, I would have to say my other influencer, my top influencer is my mom. Um, my mom is an amazing lady. Um, she doesn't allow anything that's happened to her to slow her down. Her past does not define her future. Um, I am technically what's um, defined as a crack baby. My mother was on drugs up into two weeks of me being born. Um, as of today, she is 25 years sober. Um, and we celebrate that every single year. Um, and, you know, it is something that I love to see how she has evolved. And it's just a reminder that whatever you have been through in the past does not define what your future will be. So those are my top two influencers. Allison, what is your end game? Mm, my end game is to influence the masses and change lives. Um, it's a very ambiguous end game because I am learning the more that I work and the more that I do. Um, I'm touching so many people's lives. You know, I, um, 
one of my my stylists, my my clothing stylist, you know, she told me that she decided to become a full time entrepreneur when she met me. And that was something I didn't know. And I was like, oh, you know, that's good to hear. And now she, you know, she's styling full time. She styles celebrities. Um, Her work has been on news shows and TV shows and she's doing an amazing job. And, and, you know, to think that if we would have never crossed paths, she would have never taken that leap. So I meet so many people that years or months down the line, they tell me how I've influenced them or changed their life. And, you know, my undergrad in social work taught us that although you may reach out to help a thousand, as long as one grabs your hand, that's all that matters. So I feel as though, you know, my end game is this just to continue to change lives. Um, I want to bring awareness to, you know, equality for blacks in business. You know, how can we create more entrepreneurs? That's the whole purpose of my book, um, to create more black entrepreneurs, more women entrepreneurs, and just be able to be the change in the world that we want to see. Everybody sits around and complains and complains and talks and talks, but nobody's doing the work. So I want to be one of those people who are actually doing the work that is changing what needs to be changed in the world that we currently live in. Allison, is your company tied to a social cause or mission? Um, so the social cause of mission that my company is tied to is creating economic development. Um, so we work with nonprofits, we work with, um, small businesses and politicians as well as fellow entrepreneurs. And so that is the cause that my business is working towards. But I also do have a nonprofit organization called Forward Change. And so in For a Change, what we're working towards is um, helping not only the youth, but we have a program for ex-offenders as well as um, a get out the vote program. How do you marry, blend, or balance your personal life with your family life and your business? (laughs) Um, I feel as though... What I tell people all the time who are entrepreneurs is that we have to be selfish. We have to be selfish in accomplishing the goals of our business and staying on task with the mission and vision of our business. And if your family, your significant other, your friends or your loved ones can't get in tune with that, then they may not be one of those people that are meant to be in your life forever. So I think that the balance is making sure that you have good, genuine people surrounded by you who support you fully. They know what it is that you want to accomplish. They know what your dreams are. They know what your goals are. And they're there to support you in it. So the balance in it is, one, to have good, genuine people around you. And to, two, make sure that you're pouring into them just as much as they're pouring into you. A lot of people are takers. They take so much from people, but they don't give anything back. And so the balance is having good people who are pouring into you, but you not just taking from them and you actually pouring back into them. You know, your family and friends and and loved ones, they have to understand, appreciate and value what it is that you're striving towards. And I believe that if you have good, genuine people around you, then the balance is something that comes at ease. Allison, what is a technology tool or a technology platform that is a must have for you in managing your business? Mm, That's a great question. Um, A technology tool that I must have in managing my business. Um, And managing my business, um, I would have to say, um, I don't really have a technology tool in managing my business. Something that I use to keep me on point as an entrepreneur is Flipboard. 
Um, I believe that, um, you know, they believe a lot of people say that you need to be a 5 a.m. entrepreneur. I'm not a 5 a.m. entrepreneur, <laughs> but I am a 7 or 8 a.m. entrepreneur. When I wake up, one of the first things that I do is I make sure I'm paying attention to the current events. And that's something that we all need to be in tune with what's happening in the world, you know, because trends affect your business. And if there's, you know, an article or a trend or something right now that like, you know, when Dove did what they did with their campaign a couple of weeks ago, that was prime opportunity for natural companies, skincare companies, organic companies to take advantage of what Dove put out and start branding themselves and promoting themselves. And so something that I use often for my business to keep me in tune is Flipboard. And I'm making sure that I'm reading all of the current events. You know, if it's something relevant to business, event planning or anything that I do, then I have an opportunity to post about it. Make sure that I'm, you know, getting support from other people and allowing myself to be in the know about what's going on. So a Flipboard, is that an app? Is that something that you... Yes, it's an app. Okay. Thank you for that. Yes. It is an app. Um, so it's an app that, you know, it sends you all the news, all the updates, stuff that is happening all over the world. You click categories that you're interested in. Of course, I say entrepreneurship, business, travel, things of that nature. And then whatever is happening in those particular categories, it sends you updates. Do you know how that is curated? Is it through Google or is that, would that be different from like a Google alert? No, um, I think it's different. And um, it's not from Google. They're, they have their own app. So you can buy it in the app store and you just type Flipboard in the app store and it should come up. I'll check that out. I hadn't heard of it. So thanks for that. Yes, of course. So talk to someone in our audience, Allison, they want to start a business, they're fearful. What advice would you offer them? Um, the advice that I offer people who want to start a business but are fearful. Um, chapter three in my book is called Fear is a Liar. <laughs> because the main thing that holds most entrepreneurs back is fear. Um, it's an amazing group of young ladies. Their name is Coco and Breezy, and they have a sunglass line. And um, something that they say is don't allow fear to interfere. Because fear will be the one thing that doesn't allow you to be as great as you are called to be. So my first advice to them is throw the fear out the window. Step out on faith, step out of your comfort zone, because that's what it really is. Fear of leaving your comfort zone, fear of leaving the stability of that every two week paycheck, fear of of having to solely rely on yourself as, and understand that your business will only succeed according to how much you put into it. So one, we got to throw the fear out the window. Two, we need to make a plan. We need to figure out, okay, what is it the business that you want to create? Who's going to benefit from your product or service? How are you going to implement it? Um, you know, what exactly do you need to first get started? And, and then once you create that plan, the very, very, very final step is the most important step. And it's where a lot of entrepreneurs fail as well is you have to implement and execute the plan. Everybody has a plan. Everybody has ideas. Everybody, you know, has goals. But the actual execution of the plan and those goals are two different things. So one, I would advise them to throw the fear out the window Two, make the plan, find multiple ways to create different streams of income, doing exactly what you love. And then three, implement it and execute it and be successful. Allison, we know that you're an author. So tell us what book would you recommend to our audience and why? Um, a book I recommend to a lot of people and, and my students as well. Um, it is called The Customer Funded Business by John Mullins, M-U-L-L-I-N-S. And this book is amazing. I recommend it because so many entrepreneurs are sitting at home 
with thoughts, ideas, and goals that they have not stepped out and began to actually execute them because they're thinking that they need money. They need capital. They need financing. And this book shatters a lot of those thoughts and tells you to focus on allowing your customers to fund your business. And then if you need access to capital to chase after it and you've created what you need as far as documentation, as far as having that bank account, that business bank account, that money flowing in, having the substance that you need to get approved for that access to capital. But until then, how can you allow your customers to fund your business? So it's a a very great read. I recommend it to a lot of people. And um, I think that it's what's, you know, helped me in the beginning. I bought it when I first started my business um, and I have not got any financing or taken out any business loans for my business yet. Allison, what is the biggest challenge of being an entrepreneur? (laughs) The biggest challenge of being an entrepreneur is that life is still going to happen to you. Just because you're an entrepreneur doesn't mean that every single day you're going to wake up happy. Everything's going to be in place. Every client's going to pay on time. Everything you do is going to be perfect. No, life is still going to happen. You know, your kids still may get sick. Your grandmother may still need you. You know, your car may get a flat tire today. You know, there are so many things that are your health. Oh, my goodness, your health may it may have some issues you may get sick you know so many things i i personally battle with a stomach condition so i know what it means to be sick and still have to push through for my clients and i i think that that's the biggest thing that we have to understand is that trials and tribulations are still going to come but you have to continue to stay focused on your business and allow your business to still be successful during those times It's very hard, but if we prepare ourselves to know that, yes, you still have to have that balancing act of balancing your business on one hand and balancing your personal life on another, you just have to figure out how to do both at the same time. Allison, you had alluded to this a couple of questions ago, and I was remiss. I should have brought this up before, but it's great to bring it up now. You talked about finances and you talked about capital starting the business. And that's a question a lot of people, it's on their mind. So can you tell with a, tell us how did you fund your business? How did you finance your business? And how do you continue to keep your business afloat? So as I stated, um, I allow my customers to fund my business. I am a service-based business. Therefore, I don't have any products. I don't have, you know, anything that I need to package, ship. There, there is so much money that goes into having a product-based business. So if you have a product-based business, there is more than likely the chance that you will need to get access to capital for that. Or, you know, you got to put on your bootstraps and call your cousin, your aunt, your mom, your grandma and ask them to put some money into your business. But the way that I have been able to be successful thus far is because I have a service based business and I allow my clients to fund my business. When I sign a contract, there is a retainer due, whether it's, you know, X amount of dollars, a five hundred thousand dollar retainer or depending upon the contract, it can be half up front, half at the end. Um, And so with that is how I take care of myself. I take care of my staff. I take care of the business needs. But I focus on a customer based approach where I make sure that every single contract that I bring in, I'm still able to monthly take care of my bills and stay afloat. So I went went I went with a customer based model. And I've been blessed to since I started my business four years ago have great customers, consistent customers. I believe six to seven months after I actually incorporated the business, I got two monthly retainer clients. um, And those clients lasted, you know, for at least the next two to three years. And then um, two years ago, I brought on two more monthly retainer clients and they're still going. So I have my my monthly retainers and then I have my one-off clients. That may be a client who has, you know, a job that may only take me two to three months to complete for them. And then we work out that contract 
as needed. Um, but I basically am not wanting to take out a business loan until I absolutely have to. And when I do, it will be something for a real investment that we will definitely see a return on. So I took the customer based approach um, as far as funding my business. But again, it's different for everybody, because if you have a product, you definitely need some upfront money. Um, and, you know, then in that moment, you choose whether or not you want to go to the banks or you want to go to family and friends. Allison, if you conducted this interview, what is the one question you wish I would have asked you? And I'd like you to answer that question. Oh, man. Um, so much pressure. The one question I wish you would have asked me. Um, understanding what your podcast does and, um, you know, what you aim to do with it. I, I think I would have liked you to ask me what has been my experience being a black entrepreneur and answering that question I would say that my experience of being a, a black entrepreneur has definitely changed since I first became one um, when I first became an entrepreneur I felt lonely um, I felt like it was just me I felt so much pressure so much anxiety and now, you know, fast forward four years later, I feel as though almost everybody is an entrepreneur. We have so many people who are creating businesses, creating services, and they're just getting their name out there. And it brings joy to my heart, honestly, because I feel as though the only way to actually achieve generational wealth is through entrepreneurship. So my experience as being a black entrepreneur has changed over the years but it has changed for the better. And I see our future as black entrepreneurs very, very bright. And I see us as creating the legacy and changing the conversation of generational curses that we've had in the past and creating that generational wealth that we need for the future. Allison, share with our audience a parting piece of advice you want to offer. Advice that I will offer to your audience is that if entrepreneurship is something that you want to do, then just do it. Don't consult with, you know, your friends, your family, consult with your higher being and figure out if that's what's meant for you to do and then just do it. Another thing is that entrepreneurship is not meant for everybody. Some people are nine to fivers. That's, you know, they're OK with that. And I don't think that we should pressure everybody to be an entrepreneur. But I feel as though if it's in your spirit, then you just have to figure out what's going to set you apart from all the other entrepreneurs who are out here. And then how can you perfect your craft and the brand that you're going to create for yourself? Allison, we've come to the part of our interview. It's called the Fun Facts Lightning Round. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. I'd like you to answer them quickly. Are you ready for the Fun Fact Lightning Round? And if there's something that you desire not to answer, feel free to say pass. Are you ready? I am ready. Allison, the last movie you saw? Oh, the last Broken City. You relax doing what? Taking a bath. Your favorite singer or rapper? Eric Billinger is my favorite singer at the moment. Your favorite dance song? Favorite dance song. Oh my goodness. Um, my favorite dance song, Bruno Mars, 24 Karat Magic. What food do you eat every week, no matter what? Seafood. <laughs> And your favorite month? July, of course. That's my birthday. Allison, thank you so much for spending time with us on Black Entrepreneur Experience. Before we close, what is the best way for our audience to connect with you and to support your businesses? Yes. Um, thank you for having me on this amazing podcast. And thank you for creating it, Francis. 
Um, the way that people can connect with me is I am on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, um, even though I really don't manage my Twitter like I should. But I am on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at It's Allison Renee. So that's I-T-S-A-L-L-Y-S-O-N-R-E-N-E-E. It's Allison Renee is the handle. And then if you would like to support my book, um, the website is howtobe101.com. Thank you so much, Allison. That's a wrap. Thank you so much, Francis. I appreciate you and you continue to stay focused on this amazing goal that you have with this podcast. Thank you.